Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the uh, English Quran reading. The series has come along really, really good. Alhamdulillah. Uh, we've already pretty much polished one third of the Quran. So if this is the first time that you're joining me, uh, you're most welcome. I do have a link pinned up for you to come in and uh, ask questions once we've concluded the reading. Uh, I uh, just got to make sure the technicals are good. It looks like everything is really good, alhamdulillah. And let me just, um, let me just get the little ticker up. Okay, great. So uh, definitely this, this reading has been absolutely uh, exquisite. Um, once again, I, just to preface, I'm not a scholar. Uh, side by side with me, I do have Tafsir Sadi. Uh, Sadi is a scholar, and I utilize that to give us a little bit of um, depth into some of the hot subjects and to grab some contextual understanding of what's going on. So I welcome you during the course of this reading. Uh, anytime that we're approaching the Quran, first thing that we do is we make ablution. If you need guidance on how to make wudu or ablution, there's plenty of videos on YouTube on how to do that recommend that you do that. And then we set our intention straight because uh, we're trying to receive an opening from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, so that he can give us the ability to uh, inculcate and put into practice the things that uh, we read upon and um, strengthen our resolve towards this knowledge. So once that's completed, your intention is good then uh, you say, Awudu billahi min shaitan rajim which is you're seeking refuge from the accursed shaitan, and follow that by Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, which is invoking the two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most gracious, most merciful. Okay, so without further ado, this is the 12th juz, and uh, we just started Surat Hud. Um, so we are on the 6th, Ah, yeah, uh, within this within this juz, and we're basically going to kick it off uh, with that. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And there is no creature on earth but that upon Allah is its provision, and he knows its place of dwelling and place of storage. All is in a clear register. And it is he who created the heavens and the earth in six days, and his throne had been upon water that he might test you as to which of you is best indeed. But if you say, indeed, you are resurrected after death, those who disbelieve will surely say, this is not but uh, obvious magic. Now, clearly, this isn't the six days um, time that you and I are used to, like the 24-hour spans. And I checked the Tefsi last time in regards to a previous mention about this. Um, and there was some a, a beautiful explanation on it. However, I'm wondering if there is uh, some additional detail that can be provided for us. So very quickly, let's just check to see what uh, Sadi says. Okay, so bear with me while I locate it really quickly. It looks like it's right here. And here's what he says. Allah tells us that he created the heavens and the earth in six days, the first of which was Sunday and the last of which was Friday. At the time when he created the heavens and the earth, his throne was upon the water above the seventh heaven. After he created the heavens and the earth, he rose above the throne and is controlling all affairs as he wills in accordance with his divine decrees. Hence, he says, so that he may test you and see which of you is best in conduct. That is, he created for you all that is in the heavens and on the earth, so that he may try you by means of his commands and prohibitions to see which of you uh, will be best in conduct. Uh, Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad, may Allah have mercy on him, said, that is, who will be most sincere and most correct in conduct? It was said, O Abu Ali, what does most sincere and most correct mean? He said, if a deed is sincere but not correct, it will not be accepted. And if it is correct but not sincere, it will not be accepted. So we've got this twofold approach to um, deeds and their acceptance. It will only be accepted if it is both sincere and correct. Sincere means that it is done only for the sake of Allah, and correct means that it is in uh, accordance with Islamic teachings and the Sunnah. This is like the verse in which Allah says, I have not created the jinn and humans except to worship me. Um, and that's in the Surah al Dariyat. Uh, 5156 and Allah it is uh, and 
It is Allah who created seven heavens of the earth, the like thereof. His decree descends throughout them so that you may know that Allah has power over all things and that he encompasses all things in his knowledge. And that's Surah Al-Talaq, uh, 12. Allah created all of the creation to worship him and know him by his names and attributes, and he has commanded them to do that. Uh, whoever complies and does as he is commanded will be among the successful, but whoever turns away from that will from that will be among the losers. He will inevitably bring them together in a realm where he will uh, requit them for what he enjoined upon them and what he prohibited them to do. Now, one thing I do want to note here, if you if you pay attention to the uh, language that's used in the commentary, it's a choice for you to turn away, right? So he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward those that are choosing to follow and they'll be rewarded with success. And again, that um, freedom of choice to be, uh, to uh, pick the right path or pick the wrong path. So if you turn away, it's by your choice that you turned away and naturally the consequence is, uh, is not good for you. Okay, um, beautiful explanation. So let's carry on with the, uh, with the additional reading. Uh, okay, and if we hold back from them the punishment for a limited time, they will surely say what detains it. Unquestionably on the day it comes to them, it will not be averted from them and they will be enveloped by what they used to ridicule. Now, I believe this is uh, referencing the um, minor death. So uh, it's talking about, um, uh, you know, the, the, the time that's decreed for each individual. Okay, uh, carrying on. Uh, but if we give him a taste of favor after hardship has touched him, he will surely say bad times have left me. Indeed, he is uh, exalted and uh, exultant and boastful. So we have two more qualities of people that are upon disbelief. The first quality is uh, exaltation. And the second one is boastfulness, which uh, neither of them are, are good at all. Except for those who are patient and do righteous deeds, those will have forgiveness and a great reward. Then would you possibly leave out some of what is revealed to you uh, or is it your, or is your breast constrained by it? Because they say, why has there not been sent down to him a treasure or come to him with angels? But you are uh, only a warner and Allah is disposer of all things. So the messenger knows his place and uh, he is reminded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of his place. And likewise, the people need to respect his position as such, um, both in the form of uh, respect that he is indeed a messenger, and second, in his limitations as just a messenger. Okay. Carrying on. Or do they say he invented it? Say, then bring ten surahs like it, that they have been invented, uh, and call upon for assistance whomever you can beside Allah, if you should be truthful. So this is the, the the constant challenge for the inimitability of the Quran. And by the way, um, just a personal reflection on the inimitability. It's not just about um, compiling the words together and compiling the uh, surahs and compiling the uh, ah, ah, ahruf, the, the letters uh, to the Quran. You also have to do it full swing. Meaning it actually has to have the impact both individually on the person that's reading it and societally, uh, like on communities, and then also um, in the seen and the unseen world. And that's what makes it so difficult, right? On top of everything else. So if people think that, you know, they could just put together like some hip hop rhyme or something like that, you know, that that's not how it, it's not how it works. I mean, imagine, um, the Quran has been now recited for well over 1,400 years. And subhanAllah, something that I recognize about it is no matter how much you hear it, it never gets old. 
like you know how there's like a top 20 in like music or whatever and then it's always constantly cycling the top 20 top 20 and the quran has been top one forever and and, and it will be until the day of judgment and that's part of the inimitability challenge for me right um and for everybody else that takes it sincerely okay and if they do not respond to you, then know that it, i.e. the Qur'an, was revealed with the knowledge of Allah and that there is no deity except him. Then would you not be Muslims? Meaning, like, after you're utilizing your reason, when there's no response to this challenge, can't you just submit at this point? Like, what other thing are you looking for? Hmm. Whoever desires the life of this world and its adornments, we fully repay them for their deeds uh, therein, and they therein will not be deprived. Meaning you're going to get exactly what you want um, in, in this world. Those are the ones for whom there is not in the hereafter but the fire. And lost is what they did therein, and worthless is what they used to do. Meaning there's people that are well above a state of contentment. They're well above, um, you know, they're happy with their current condition and the, the lifestyle that they're living and so on and so forth. Uh, however, the regret comes later. Okay. So is one who stands upon a clear evidence from his Lord, like the aforementioned, uh, and a, a witness from him follows it. And before it was the scripture of Moses to lead and as a mercy, those believers in the former revelations believe in it, i.e. the Quran, but whoever uh, disbelieves in it from the various factions, the fire is his promised destination. And this is referencing to those previous rabbis and scholars that converted like uh, Abdullah bin Salam, right? And a fire is his promised destination. So do not be in doubt about uh, it, indeed, it is the truth from your Lord, but most of the people do not believe. So here we have a condition. When we see people that are upon disbelief, they're, fa they're falling into the category of most people, right? Uh, so nothing new, right? Nothing new. And again, it's a personal choice, a personal matter, um, because there's no compulsion in religion in Islam. And who is more unjust than he who invents a lie about Allah? Those will be presented before their Lord, and the witnesses will say, these are the ones who lied against their Lord. Unquestionably, the curse of Allah is upon the wrongdoers. Who averted people from the way of Allah and sought to make it seem deviant while they concerning the hereafter were disbelievers? Meaning you have all this propaganda, all this stuff that's going on. And this is why we encourage people to just pick up the primary sources, pick up the Quran, read it for yourself. Um, there's no reason why you should be learning Islam from like any news channel whatsoever or um, any individual whatsoever other than the Prophet Islam, and uh, the Quran itself. There's no one else that can give you a better encompassing of, uh, of Islam. Okay. Those uh, were not causing failure to Allah on earth, nor did they have besides Allah any protectors. For them, the punishment will be the uh, will be multiplied. They were not able to hear, nor did they see. Those are the ones who will have lost. Those are the ones who will have lost themselves, and lost from them is what they used to invent. So again, it's reflecting on that personal choice. You lost yourself, right? And and the consequence of it was that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sealed the heart uh, while you were continually being in in defiant disobedience. Assuredly, it is they. Uh, in the hereafter, who will be the greatest losers. <clears throat> Indeed, they who have believed and done righteous deeds and humbled themselves to their Lord, those are the companions of paradise. They will abide there. They will, they will abide eternally therein. So humbleness, submissiveness, righteousness, justice, um, courage. These are all the characteristics of people that are upon truth. Uh, and that are upon belief. And again, everybody's at their own different journey. So there's people that are actively seeking, right? But as long as you're staying true to yourself, being humble, um, being courageous, and being sincere, Allah's path that I'll guide you to uh, Islam. Okay, <clears throat> carrying on. The example of the two parties is like the blind and the deaf. Uh, it's like the blind and the deaf and the seeing and the hearing are they equal in comparison then will you not remember so 
uh, obviously a, a beautiful analogy, okay? Uh, one who sees is not like one who doesn't. One who hears is not like one who doesn't. And then notice, uh, will you not remember? Meaning, will you not remember the full journey? Will you not think? Um, because the Quran is considered as a reminder. So the Quran is uh, prompting you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is prompting you through his message to, to reflect, think, and remember where you're going. And we had certainly sent Noah to his people saying, indeed, I am to you a clear warner that you not worship except Allah. Indeed, I fear for you the punishment of a painful day. So the eminent among those who disbelieved, his people said, we do not see you but as a man like ourselves, and we do not see you followed except by those who are the lowest of us uh, and at first suggestion. So this could have been referencing uh, people within poverty, right? Usually when um, the messengers came into play, the, the first, typically the first followers were uh, people that were not of like noble status. Rather, they were just common folk, right? So they, they would mock them um, and they would degrade them, right? And we do not see in you over us any merit. Rather, we think you are liars. Uh, he said, oh, my people, have you considered if I should be upon clear evidence from my Lord while he has given me mercy from himself, but it has been made unapparent to you? Should we force it upon you while you are averse to it? And the Quran continues. Um, and, O oh my people, I ask not of you for it any wealth. My reward is not but from Allah. And I am not one to drive away those who have believed. Indeed, they will meet their Lord. But I see that you are a people behaving ignorantly. So ignorance and, you know, you can see that there's no motives other than just to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, this, was, this was his command. His, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to go deliver this message. Okay, and O oh my people, who would protect me from Allah if I drove them away? Then will you not be reminded? Meaning, look, um, if I was if I was going up against God, who's going to protect me from God? Right? I mean, it's a no brainer. And I do not tell you that I have the this uh, excuse me. And I do not tell you that I have the depositories containing the provision of Allah, or that I know the unseen. Nor do I tell you that I am an angel. Nor do I say of those upon whom my eyes look down, that Allah will never grant them any good. Allah is most knowing of what is within their souls. Indeed, I would then be among the wrongdoers, uh, i.e. the unjust. They said, O Noah, you have disputed, i.e. opposed us, and been frequent in dispute of us. So bring us what you threaten, uh, what you threaten us if you should be of the truthful. So, you know, they're saying, uh, bring it, you know, we're ready for it. We're ready for the punishment. He said, Allah will only bring it to you if he wills, and you will not cause him failure. And my advice will not benefit you. Although I wish to advise you, if Allah should intend to put you in error, he is your Lord and to him, you will be returned. Or do they say about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he invented it. Say, if I have invented it, then upon me is the consequence of my crime but I am innocent of what crimes you commit. And it was revealed to Noah that no one will believe from your people except those who have already believed. So do not be distressed by what they have been doing and construct the ship under our observation and our inspiration and do not address me concerning those who have wronged. Indeed, they are to be drowned. And interestingly enough, right, there was a part of Noah's family was, was, um, the the consequentially drowned right and he constructed the ship and whenever an assembly of the eminent of his people passed by him they ridiculed him he said if you ridicule us then we will ridicule you just as you ridicule and you are going to know who will get a punishment that will disgrace him on earth and upon whom will descend an enduring punishment in the hereafter i mean <clears throat> You know, subhanAllah, just thinking back on what happened with the prophets, alayhi um, they really did go through the toughest trials. I mean, both personal and public. They really, really, you know, because constructing this thing, this thing didn't take a day. 
you know, they they looked at um, Musa excuse me, they looked at Nuh salam, <clears throat> and they were just they were probably bashing him day in and day out, you know, probably throwing stones and doing all sorts of stuff at him, calling him crazy and whatnot. I mean, you know, imagine uh, the resilience of of his character and 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 the strength and of um, dealing with that type of adversity, right? So a good thing to do when you see something like this and when you reflect on it is to uh, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you the characteristics of the prophets. Um, that way that you can be uh, resilient to ridicule and resilient to, um, you know, this uh, silly types of criticism and stuff like that. So it's, it's a good way to good way to make dua. Okay. So it was until when our command came and the oven overflowed, we said, load upon it, i.e. the ship of each creature, two mates, and your family, except those about whom the word, i.e. decree, has proceeded, and include whoever uh, has believed. But none had believed with him except a few. So after all this stuff, there was just a few people that believed. And Noah said, embark therein in the name of Allah are its course and its anchorage. Indeed, my Lord is forgiving and merciful. And it sailed with them through waves like mountains. And Noah called to his son, who was apart from them, O oh, my son, come aboard with us and uh, be not with the disbelievers. Now, I'm going um, to jet on over to the Tefsir because I'm interested to see if there is some additional information on uh, ayat 40 down. So let's see if we can find something. Uh, naturally, anything and everything is a benefit from Sadi, but um, something just to expunge on some of these things that we read. 40. Okay. 40, 41, 42. Okay. So let's do this. I'm going to go down to IF 43 because he explains it in um, segments. So uh, 41, uh, we covered 42. And it sailed with them through waves like mountains. And Noah called to his son who was apart from them. Oh, my son, come aboard with us and be not with the disbelievers. But he said, I will take refuge on a mountain to protect me from the water. Noah said, there is no protector today from the decree of Allah, except for whom uh, except for whom he gives mercy. And the waves came between them, and he was among the drowned. So even after all that, he still had to witness his son um, being summoned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so let's see what the tafsir says. So here's, here we go. Um, so this is 40 on down to 43. And so it went until uh, when our command, that is the time when we had decreed that the punishment should befall them, came water gushing up out of the earth. That is, Allah caused the sky to send down rain in torrents and caused the earth to gush forth with springs. And the waters met and rose to an extended decree. So the earth was prevented from swallowing the water up. Um, we said to Noah, take on board a, a pair of every species, that is from every type of creature, take on board a male and a female so the different types, uh, so the different species could survive. As for the rest of the animals, other than the pairs that we were, uh, that were taken on board, the ark could not carry them all. Um, and namely those who were carrying on, carrying on, it says, and your family, except those whom the sentences has already been passed, namely those who were disbelievers, such as his son who was drowned. Um, okay, so this is 41, 42, 43. Noah said to those whom Allah had instructed him to take on board, embark in the name of Allah, uh, will be its course and its mooring. That is, it will set a sail in the name of Allah and drop anchor in the name of Allah and will set sail by his command and power. Meaning, uh, there the, it's starting and it's stopping when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants and where he wants. And he has forgiven us and had mercy on us, and he had delivered us from the wrongdoing people. Then Allah describes its journey as if we can see it. 
and it sailed with them, that is, with Noah and those who had embarked with him, amid waves like mountains. Allah protected it and took care of its people. So these aren't like, like this isn't like some like rinky-dinky flood, right? This is waves like mountains. So this is like a full-blown, like, like it's like a monsoon tsunami kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not small by any means. You know, when there's like a rogue wave, I don't know if you guys have checked out like rogue wave videos, but uh, that's what I'm imagining happening here with these like mountain size waves coming through and somehow this, you know, wooden ark had survived, right? So Allah protected it and took care of its people. Noah called out to his son when he embarked, telling him to embark with him, who kept himself apart from them when they embarked. In other words, he was some distance apart from them, but uh, Noah wanted him to come closer so that he could embark. So he said to him, oh, my son, embark with us and do not be with the disbelievers, lest there befall you some, uh, lest there befall you the same as will befall them. The son, not believing his father, when he told him that no one would be saved except those who went on board the ark with him. So yeah, today there is no refuge from Allah's punishment except for those whom uh, he shows mercy to. That is, no mountain or anything else can protect anybody. Even if he took all possible measures, he would not have been saved if Allah does not save him. Okay. Now, I will also say this. Um, I encourage you to conduct some further research into this, but the Islamic point of view is that the flood was localized, right? Uh, and if I'm if I remember correctly, the flood being localized also meant that the um, the populace of the people was very, very small, right? So it wasn't like this, uh, you know, the whole world was flooded and then, you know, why, why aren't there any marks on something like that? The world at that point was just very, very, very small. Okay, cool. Uh, so we covered till 43. Um, and here we are, 44. And it was said, O earth, swallow your water, and O sky, withhold your rain. And the water subsided, and the matter was accomplished. And it, i.e. the ship, came to rest on the mountain of uh, uh, Judi. And it was said, Away with the wrongdoing people. And Noah called to his Lord and said, My Lord, indeed, my son is of my family, and indeed, your promise is true, and you are the most uh, just of judges. Okay. And it looks like he was given a response. So uh, he said, Oh, Noah, indeed, he is not of your family. Indeed, he is one of those were uh, one. Excuse me. Indeed, he is one whose work was other than righteous. So ask me not for the for that about which you have no knowledge. Indeed, I advise you lest you become uh, among the ignorant. So subhanAllah, this is pretty profound, and it leads to the um, the family that is Islam. So I, I, um, uh, I've been told many a times, and I also have felt it as well, when I accepted Islam, that my family increased. And I know that some of my... Um, some of my blood, uh, some of my blood family is much farther away from my Muslim family. Meaning that they're just, they're not upon belief, right? And you want to be with the believers. Okay, carrying on. Noah said, my Lord, I seek refuge in you from asking that of which I have no knowledge. And unless you forgive me and have mercy upon me, I will be among the losers. So uh, this is also another piece of profound um, uh, evidence as to where our character should be. Notice that uh, Noah over here is following the characteristics of Adam. After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reprimanded him, meaning like, I know more than what you know, he turned into apology and repentance. He did not do what uh, Iblis did and turned into blame, um, meaning like, hey, you know, this was my son. How are you going to know? And blah, blah, blah. Rather, he was apologetic. And he said, um, you know, indeed, that I would be among one of the losers had you not forgiven me and guided me and showed mercy. 
It was said, O Noah, disembark in security from us and blessing upon you and upon nations descending from those with you. But other nations of them, we will grant enjoyment. Then there will be, then there will touch them from us a painful punishment. So we have a, um, I don't know why this is my phone. So we have a, uh, a clear cut uh, distinction between believers and disbelievers and um, that they're going to get that type of enjoyment now, but there's going to be a painful punishment. And he gives us examples. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us examples just like this flood uh, and uh, amongst everything else. That is for the, from the news of the unseen, which we reveal to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Sallallahu was given a glimpse into uh, the past, right? We don't believe that the Quran is a book of history. Rather, um, it is uh, a book of revelation. So as he's reciting these verses, remember these verses were geared towards certain um, confirmations of what happened in previous scriptures and then many corrections of things that they got wrong, right? Um, by they, I mean not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I mean the people that tried to alter it and they altered it incorrectly. So here he says, uh, you knew it not, neither you nor your people before this. So be patient. Indeed, the best outcome is for the righteous. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirms here, he didn't have this knowledge. It was given to him at the correct time and for the exact reason. So anybody that claims that he was a copycat, um, that is uh, a clear, uh, it is a clear kind of uh, exaltation and uh, a washing of hands that he, he did not copy because he did not have this type of knowledge until it was revealed to him. And to add, we sent their brother Hud. He said, oh, my people worship Allah. You have no deity other than him. You are not but inventors of falsehood. Now, what I love about the Quran is it constantly keeps mentioning other prophets. And you can see that continual chain, that continual thread, that um, it's just one message, right? Which is uh, pure monotheism and to worship uh, the only deity worthy of worship. Oh, my people, I do not ask you for it, i.e. my advice, any reward. My reward is only from the one who created me. Then will you not reason? Now, in this particular surah, surah Hud, it seems that this is also a common thing. Uh, what is your motive? Why are you doing this stuff? right? And the messengers always had the same motive. I'm a messenger from God. I was sent on a task. I'm delivering and accomplishing my task. I don't want money. I don't want any type of payment. I don't want any type of recognition, nothing. Just I just want my reward is with my Lord, right? And oh, my people ask forgiveness of your Lord and then repent to him. He will send uh, rain from the sky upon you in showers and increase you in strength, uh, added to your strength. And do not turn away being criminals. Uh, they said, O oh, Hud, you have not brought us clear evidence, and we are not ones to leave our gods on your say so, um, nor are we believers in you. So you have the delivery of the message, you have the reasoning for the, for the, uh, and the purpose, right? The motivation that was given. And they said, We don't believe your message, and we also don't believe you. So you have a rejection. We only say that some of our gods have possessed you with evil, i.e. insanity. So they said, not only are we rejecting you on the basis that we just don't want to, right? But we're going to try to conjure up an excuse of insanity. He said, indeed, I call law to witness and witness yourselves that I am here from, uh, that I am free from whatever you associate with Allah. Meaning, I don't want to have anything to do with the, the associate gods that you mentioned. I'm only interested in... Uh, the only deity worthy of worship other than him. So plot against me altogether. Then do not give me respite. Meaning if you pray to your false gods, go ahead and have them curse me and have them take care of me. And um, we'll see what happens. Right. Indeed. I have relied upon Allah, my Lord and your Lord. There is no cre uh, There's no creature, but that he holds it by its forelock, i.e. controls it. So, um, very interesting, very interesting use of words here. Indeed, my Lord is on a path that is straight. Especially the use of the forelock over here, um, which is like typically 
uh, with higher cognitive thinking, you have your uh, prefrontal cortex over here. So that's a, a very interesting use of that terminology. But if you turn away, then I have already conveyed that with which I was sent to you. My Lord will give succession to a people other than you, and you will not harm him at all. Indeed, my Lord is over all things uh, guardian. And when, when you, excuse me, and when our command came, we saved Hud and those who believed with him by mercy from us, and we saved them from a harsh punishment. Uh, and that was Ad, who rejected the signs of their Lord and disobeyed his messenger and followed the order of every obstinate tyrant. So there was tyranny going on. There was oppression that was going on. And uh, people would not think for themselves. And they were therefore followed in this world with a curse. And as well on the day of resurrection, unquestionably, Ad denied their Lord uh, then away with Ad, the people of Hud. Now, um, this is a, uh, also a really cool use of language here. So, let's see if I can reread it here. And they were therefore followed in this world with a curse. Um, and as well on the day of resurrection, unquestionably, Ad denied their Lord, then away with Ad, the people and the people of Hud. So it's giving you a foreshadow of how they're going to speak on the day of judgment. So it's giving you a foreshadow of something that hasn't quite happened yet. Um, but they will, uh, uh, they will speak a particular way, right? Okay. Uh, carrying on. And to Thamud, we sent their brother Saleh. He said, oh, my people worship Allah and you have no deity other than him. He has produced you from the earth and settled you in it. So ask forgiveness of him and then repent to him. Indeed, my Lord is near and responsive. They say, O oh, Saleh, you were amongst, uh, among us a man of promise before this. Do you forbid us to worship what our forefathers worship or what our fathers worship? And indeed, we are about that to which you invite us in uh, disquieting doubt. Meaning don't just, you know, the messengers came to fix things, right? And if these people were upon disbelief, if these people were upon uh, falsehoods and so on, they came to correct the path. That was their job and that was the, the mercy uh, bestowed upon people by the Lord of the Worlds. He said, oh, my people, have you considered if I should be upon clear evidence from my Lord and he has given me mercy from himself, who would protect me from Allah if I disobeyed him? Meaning, <laughs> what's the alternative, guys? Like, if I'm if I'm really losing my mind and if I'm, you know, saying all these things, like, who's going to protect me from God? Seriously. How am I to stop? Right. I mean, imagine the the gravity of the responsibility, right? So, like, it's, you know, seriously, imagine the gravity, meaning, like, there's no turning back for me either, right, from a messenger standpoint. So you would not increase me except in loss, meaning it's a, the situation is fixed. I know, I know that I'm upon truth, and I can only go down from here, right? Uh, meaning if he followed the people. So if he followed creation, he can only go down. And oh, my people, this is the she camel of Allah. She is to you a sign. So let her feed upon Allah's earth and do not touch her with harm or you will be taken by an impending punishment. It's very similar to the situation of Adam. Just don't go to that tree over there. Here's this she camel, right? Just a very uh, tit for tat, like almost like a one for one um, example, right? but they hamstrung her. So he said, enjoy yourselves in your homes for three days. That is a promise not to be denied, i.e. unfailing. So when our command came, we saved Salah and those who believed with him by mercy from us and saved them from the disgrace of the day or of that day. Indeed, it is your Lord who is the powerful, the exalted in might. And the shriek seized those who had wronged, and they became within their homes corpses fallen prone, as if they had uh, never prospered therein. Unquestionably, Thamud denied their Lord, then away with Thamud. 
Now, I want to see if um, Sadie can expand a little bit on this uh, shrieking. Maybe it might be in there. It might not. Uh, let's see what... Um, Let's see if there is an expansion on this. But there was a, a long time ago I heard something about this. I don't want to purely speak from ignorance, but it was because of the type of punishment that was um, exacted that it was uh, it was incredibly, incredibly loud. So it was like a blast, but the blast was like deafening to the point where like it, it was this like the the blast itself that got people not like the fire from the blast or something like that so let's see um what uh said he says up here he says the blast overtook the wrongdoers it was a mighty blast that caused their hearts to stop so um unfortunately he doesn't go into much detail other than that uh, and morning found them lying lifeless in their homes that is immobile and not moving as if they had never lived there. That is when the punishment came to them. It was as, as if they had never enjoyed life in their homes and had never known any good times for all delight left them. And they were overtaken by the eternal punishment that would never end. And it is as if, uh, it had always been with them. So that's pretty, that's pretty scary. Um, you know, naturally in Islam, we believe that, um, when you see somebody that's kind of that's that, that passed away, if they were like a righteous person, that they'd almost be smiling, right? Um, that they're really happy. And if somebody is upon disbelief, that they would, you know, just almost have this like look of agony on their face. So, uh, you know, something to, to I encourage you to look deeper into this. So this is um, Ayah sixty-seven of Surah Hud, which is the eleventh chapter of the Quran. Okay, uh, let's carry on. As if they had never prospered therein, unquestionably Thamud denied their Lord and away with Thamud. And certainly did our messenger, i.e. angels, come to Abraham with good tidings. They said, peace. He said, peace. And did not delay in bringing them a roasted calf. But when, uh, when he saw their hands not reaching for it, he distrusted them and felt from them apprehension. They said, fear not. We have been sent to the people of Lot. And his wife was standing and she smiled. Then we gave her good tidings of Isaac and after Isaac, Jacob. Okay. So um, this is another, you know, way on how the Quran remains uh, miraculous is because obviously like angels don't need to eat food. So when Ibrahim uh, served these people um, meat, then uh they refused to eat it, right? So he became apprehensive. But because they're angels, they're just mimicking what a human being looks like, right? So they're in human form, but they don't have the desires of human beings, right? So uh, it, it's, it's a pretty cool thing. If you check out that story in depth, I, I encourage you to check that stuff out um, additionally uh, for some additional research. But, you know, the imagine like having uh, angels in your house and wondering like, oh man, what's going on? You know, like, am I in trouble kind of thing? Okay. She said, woe to me, shall I give birth while I am an old woman? And this, my husband is an old man. Indeed, this is an amazing thing, meaning a wondrous thing, an amazing thing, a miraculous thing is happening. They said, are you amazed at the decree of Allah? May the mercy of Allah and his blessings be upon you, people of the house. Indeed, he is praiseworthy and honorable. And when the fright had left Abraham and the good tidings had reached him, he began to argue, i.e. plead with us concerning the people of Lot. Okay, so you have a messenger that's looking, that's pleading with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It carries on. Indeed, Abraham was forbearing, grieving, and frequently returning to Allah. The angel said, O Abraham, give up this plea. Indeed, the command of your Lord has come, and indeed there will reach them a punishment that cannot be repelled. And when our messengers, the angels, came to Lot, he was anguished for them and felt for them a great discomfort and said, this is a trying day. So look at the characteristics of the messengers, right? These people were very kind, caring, concerned, like community-oriented people, okay? If... It, Imagine if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
spoke to you and you'd be like, oh, I'm good, you know, and, and, and now you'd have this like high and mighty thing, right? But these people cared more about others than they cared about themselves, uh, these messengers, right? So really reflect deeply on some of the, the characteristics that these messengers are displaying and see how you can uh, apply it towards your everyday. Okay. Um, I mean, he literally pleaded with it until the angel said, you know, stop. The decree is like, it's, it's going to happen, man. Like, stop, right? Okay. Uh, and his people came hastening to him. And before this, they had been doing evil deeds. He said, oh, my people, these are my daughters. They are pure for you. So Allah, uh, so fear Allah and do not disgrace me concerning my guests. Is there not among you a man of reason? So obviously, you know, Ibrahim Ali Salam was offering up his daughters for marriage and saying, like, you know, please, like, stop doing, desist these things that you're doing because they were having uh, relations with, with the same gender. And they said, uh, you have already known that we have not concerning your daughters, uh, i.e. women, any claim, i.e. desire, and indeed, you know what we want. So Las Pantas says these people were following their desires. These people were... Um, you know, uh, ignoring the rules, the laws, and the status quo of what uh, the natural circumstances of, of things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set, the natural balance of things, right? And he said, dude, you already know what we want. Just leave us alone, okay? We don't, we're not concerned with marrying your daughters. He said, if only I had against you some power or could take refuge in a stronger, in a strong support, <laughs> meaning there was no stronger support and he doesn't have any power over anybody, right? They, the angel said, O Lot, indeed, we are the messengers of your Lord. Therefore, they will never reach you. So set out with your family uh, during a portion of the night. And let not any among you look back except your wife. Indeed, um, uh, indeed, she will be struck by uh, that which strikes them. Indeed, their appointment is for the morning. It is not the morning near. Okay. So, yeah, uh, the other thing that's, that's a pretty cool takeaway is you have, um, let's see. So the, the angels were saying that they were headed over to Lot, but they, uh, they went to Ibrahim first. And then the angel said, oh, Lot, indeed, we are messengers of your Lord. So you had Prophet Lut and Ibrahim. They were, they were basically like neighbors. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Okay, so when our command came, we made the highest part of the city its lowest and uh, rained upon them stones of layered hard clay, which were marked from your Lord. And it is, uh, and it, i.e. Allah's punishment, is not from the wrongdoers very far. And to Midian, we sent their brother Shu'aib. He said, O oh, my people, worship Allah. You have no deity other than him and do not decrease from the measure and the scale. And indeed, I see you in prosperity, but indeed, I fear for you the punishment of an all-encompassing day. Meaning, even if nations were prosperous, no matter how high and mighty and how well you were doing, um, you really have to be mindful, right? You have to be mindful of the, the, the end day, right? And oh, my people, give full measure and weight in, uh, weight in justice and do not deprive the people of their due and do not commit abuse on the earth spreading corruption. Again, same consistency in the message. Absolutely same consistency. Stop spreading corruption. Uh, give people their due measure. Serve with justice. Don't commit any abuse, right? What remains lawful from Allah is best for you if you would be believers. But I am not a guardian over you. Same thing. I'm not a guardian, not a messenger. I'm just a, or excuse me, I'm not a manager. I'm just a messenger. They said, O Sha'ib, does your prayer, i.e. religion, command you that uh, we should leave what our fathers worship and not do uh, with our wealth uh, what we please? Same thread. Still defiantly disobedient, sticking to old rules that were false rules that have uh, that are built on nothing but conjecture and innovation. And who are you to tell me to, what to do with my money, right? Indeed, indeed, you are the forbearing, the discerning. 
He said, O oh, my people, have you considered if I am upon clear evidence from my Lord and he has provided me with good provision from him? And I do not intend to differ from you in that which I have forbidden you. I only intend to reform as much as I am able, and my success is not but through Allah. Upon him I relied, and to him I returned. Okay, so now here we have a different prompting of a reflection. Um, that I, Have you not considered that if I am uh, upon clear heaven to my Lord, and he has provided me with good provision from him, meaning I want nothing from you, I've got my provision from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I don't intend to differ from you in that which I have forbidden you. Meaning, I'm not setting a different standard for myself than I, than, and, and for you guys. I'm literally setting the exact same standard. And I'm going to do my best to reform as much as I can. Right? So there was a change going on with him as well. Okay? And he admits that he's not in, in any form of perfection. It's as much as I am able. So he's not only reforming himself, but he's reforming the community as well. And my success is not but through Allah, meaning he's going to make supplication and he's going to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide him and protect him and change his heart and reform him the same way that you and me are, right? Nothing different. Just, uh, they were just honored people, honored men, right? And by honored, I mean they were honored with the st status of prophethood. But this is a really big reassurance, guys, a really, really big reassurance. If you're having a tough time, that know that the prophets and their trials and uh, their own reformations, they clearly said that this is uh, a uh, up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they turn to him always. And, oh, my people, let not your dissension from me cause you to be struck by that similar to what struck the people of Noah or the people of Hud, or the people of Saleh, and the people of Lot are not from you far away. Meaning, you, now he's giving multiple examples of, of prehistoric stuff, and you're not far away from exactly what uh, Lut, Alaysan, and his people were doing. I mean, like, you, you guys are like three days away from punishment. You know what I mean? And ask forgiveness of your Lord, not exactly three days away. I'm just saying, like, metaphorically speaking, timeline, very short, very short away. And ask forgiveness of your Lord and then repent to him. Indeed, my Lord is merciful and affectionate. They said, O Sha'ib, we do not understand much of what you say. And indeed, we consider you among us as weak. And if not for your family, we would have stoned you to death. And you are not to us one respected. So for, for some reason or another right? They're categorizing him as, hey, uh, we don't care about what you say. You're weak, meaning it could be just like a, a familial status. And had it not been for, for your family, as in like the honor that they have, we would have taken care of you. And remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned the previous people, and he tells us about what the previous people did in regards to executing messengers, right? So st stoning and this type of capital wrongful punishment, right? He said, oh, my people, is my family more respected for power by you than Allah? Okay, so they were a family of power. But you put him behind your backs in neglect. Indeed, my Lord is encompassing of what you do. And oh, my people, work according to your position. Indeed, I am working. So he's recording. He's, he's working to the capacity of a messenger. You are going to know to whom will come a punishment that will disgrace him and who is a liar. So watch, indeed, I am with you, a watcher awaiting the outcome. Okay, carrying on. And when our command came, we saved Shu'aib and those who believed with him by mercy from us. And the shriek seized those who had wronged, and they became within their homes corpses fallen prone. Uh, and if if they had never, as if they had never prospered therein, then away with Midian as the mood was taken away. And we did, we did certainly send Moses with our signs and a clear authority to Pharaoh and his establishment, but they followed the command of Pharaoh, and the command of Pharaoh was not uh, at all discerning. Okay. We will proceed uh, his people. 
we will precede his people on the day of resurrection and uh, lead them into the fire. And wretched is the place to which uh, they are led. And they were followed in this world with a curse and on the day of resurrection. And wretched is the gift which was which is given, meaning that curse. That is from the news of the cities which we relate to you of them. Some are still standing and some are as harvest mowed down. So if you go check out the four corners of the world, if you're, if you're into world travel and stuff like that, you can visit some of the places that are still standing. Okay. Uh, and we did not wrong them, but they wronged themselves. So again, it was a consequence, right? There was bad happening. Messenger was sent. Disbelief was chosen over belief. And then the consequence of punishment came. So, And that was because they wronged themselves. And they were not availed at all by their gods, which they, which they invoked other than Allah. And there came the command of your Lord, and they did not increase them in any, uh, increase them in other than ruin. Meaning all those false promises that were made by their associates and by these people, <clears throat> they were just that false promises. And thus is the seizure of your Lord when he seizes the city while they are committing wrong. Indeed, his seizure is painful and severe. Indeed, in that is a sign for those who fear the punishment of the hereafter. That is a day for which the people will be collected. That is a day which will be witnessed. Now, um, yeah, I know, know we were taught to don't go anywhere near the fire, right? You want to be as far away from it as possible. But we are going to see these things on the day of judgment. And, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really protect us because that's, it's, if you see the, uh, outcomes of some of these things, you know, um, it's just a blink of an eye in comparison to eternity, right? So it's really, um, really, if, if somebody were to deeply reflect on this, uh, they would they would have a change of heart. And we do not delay it except for a limited term, meaning the meaning uh, death. The day it comes, no soul will speak except by his permission. And among them will be the wretched and the prosperous. As for those who uh, who were destined to be wretched, they will be in the fire. For them, there is a violent exhaling and inhaling. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, even just thinking about this, right? Violent exhaling and inhaling. You know, imagine breathing through a straw for the rest of your life. Uh, and excuse me, imagine breathing through a straw for the rest of eternity. That's terrible um uh, they will be and, and also this can actually even be metaphoric as well too this could be metaphoric of the body leaving the soul and entering into uh, hellfire a violent exhaling is like if 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 a soul were to be ripped apart from your i mean i'm just again my own personal reflection if the soul were to be ripped apart from your body and then the inhaling would be like you would just be thrown into the hellfire without any type of um, any type of account uh, because of how severe your your misdeeds were. They will be abiding therein as long as the heavens and the earth endure, except what your Lord should will. Indeed, your Lord is an effector of what he intends. And as for those who were destined to be prosperous, they will be in paradise, abiding therein as long as the heavens and the earth endure, except what your Lord should will. A bestowal uninterrupted. Carrying on. So do not be in doubt, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as to what these polytheists are worshiping. They worship not, except as their fathers worship it, worship before them, uh, worship before. And indeed, we will give them their share undiminished. And you're getting exactly what you earned. Uh, no more, no less. And we have certainly given Moses the scripture, but it came under disagreement. And if not for a word that proceeded from your Lord, it would have been judged between them. And indeed, they are concerning it, i.e. the Quran, in disquieting doubt. And indeed, each of the believers and disbelievers, your Lord will fully compensate them for their deeds. Indeed, he is aware of what they do. So remain on a right course as you have been commanded. You and those who have turned back with you to Allah 
and do not transgress. Indeed, he is seeing of what you do. And do not incline towards those who do wrong, lest you be touched by the fire. And you would not have other than a law any protectors. Then uh, you would not be helped. And establish prayer at the two ends of the day and at the approach of the night. Indeed, good deeds do away with misdeeds. That is a reminder for those who remember. So obviously, um, Salah, very, very important, guys. You know, make sure that you keep that uh, connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strong. And try your best not to skip out and be lazy on the prayers. And if you do happen to have a circumstance where you miss out, um, be sure to make them up as quickly as possible. And be patient, for indeed Allah does not allow to be, lo uh, be lost the reward of those who do good. So why were there not among the generations before you those of enduring discrimination, forbidding corruption on earth, except a few of those we saved from among them? But those who wronged pursued what luxury they were given therein, and they were criminals. And their Lord would not have destroyed the cities unjustly while their people were reformers. So if, they're, if you're under the, in the process of reformation, okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not have destroyed these cities unjustly. So rather what was happening is um, they gave up on reformation, right? And they chose the alternative. The alternative was disbelief. And if your Lord had willed, he could have made mankind one community, but they will not cease to differ. Except whom your Lord has given mercy and for that he created them. But the word of your Lord is to be fulfilled that I will surely fill hell with jinn and men altogether. And each story we relate to you from the news of the messengers is that by which we make firm your heart. And there has come to you in this the truth and an instruction and a reminder for the believers. And say to those who do not believe, work according to your position. Indeed, we are working. And wait, indeed, we are waiting. And to Allah belong the unseen aspects of the heavens and the earth, and to him we will be returned, uh, we will return the matter all of it. So worship him and rely upon him, and your Lord is not unaware of that which you do. So that concludes Surah Al Hud. Um, uh, Surah Hud. So we uh, are moving on over to Surah Yusuf. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. <clears throat> Alif Lam Ra, these are the verses of the clear book. Indeed, we have sent it down as an Arabic Quran that you might understand. We relate to you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best of stories and what we have revealed to you of this Quran, although you were before it among the unaware. Of these stories mentioned when Joseph sent, said to his father, O my father, indeed I have seen in a dream eleven stars and the sun and the moon. I saw them prostrating to me. He said, O oh my son, do not relate your vision to your brothers, or they will contrive against you a plan. Indeed, Satan to man is a manifest enemy. And thus will your Lord choose you and teach you the interpretation of narratives, i.e. events or dreams. And he had the ability to interpret dreams. And complete his favor upon you and upon the family of Jacob, as he completed it upon your fathers before, Abraham and Isaac. Indeed, your Lord is knowing and wise. So um, there's a preparation for prophethood. Certainly were there in Joseph and his brother signs for those who ask, such as when they said, Joseph and his brother are more beloved to our father than we. While we are a clan, indeed, our father is in clear error. Kill Joseph or cast him out to another land. The countenance, i.e. attention, of your father will then be only for you, and you will be after that a righteous people. So obviously that's a bunch of nonsense. You can't be committing uh, egregious acts in order to obtain righteousness, right? Carrying on. Set a speaker among them. Do not kill Joseph, but throw him into the bottom of the well. Some travelers will pick him up if you would do something. They said, Our father, why do you not entrust us with Joseph while well, indeed we are to him sincere counselors? Send him with us tomorrow, that he may eat well and play, and indeed we will be his guardians. Jacob said, Indeed, it saddens me that you should take him, and I fear that a wolf would eat him while you are of him unaware. 
meaning there's there's cause for concern and I'm hesitant. They said, if a wolf should eat him while we are strong, uh, a strong clan, indeed, we would have, we would then be losers. So when they took him out and agreed to put him into the bottom of the well, but we inspired to him, you will surely inform them someday about this affair of theirs while they do not perceive your identity. And they came to their father at night weeping. They said, our father, indeed, we went racing each other and left Joseph with our possessions and a wolf ate him. But you would not believe us, even if we were truthful. And they brought upon his shirt false blood. Jacob said, rather your souls have enticed you to something. So patience is most fitting. And Allah is the one who sought for help against that which you describe. And... Um, uh, meaning that he's going to seek to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help uh, for what you describe, and I'm going to be patient. So he didn't believe them, uh, based on my reflection here. He doesn't believe them. And there came a company of travelers. Then they sent their water drawer and a uh, water drawer, and he let down his bucket. He said, Good news, here is a boy. And they concealed him, taking him as merchandise, and Allah was knowing of what they did. And they sold him for a reduced price. Uh, a few dirhams, and they were concerning him of those content with little, meaning um, they basically treated him as a captive and exchanged him for some money, right? Uh, and they were they were satisfied with little. So like they were not, um, it probably it wasn't something that either, like they were just people that didn't have knowledge of trade or they were, you know, this was like a, an opportunity to them, like a once in a lifetime opportunity. And they were happy with whatever they can get as long as they could rid, rid themselves of the problem and get some type of compensation. Again, my own personal reflection. And they sold him for a reduced price, a few dirhams, and they were concerning him of those content with little. And the one from Egypt who bought him said to his wife, make his residence comfortable. Perhaps he will benefit us or we will adopt him as a son. And thus we established Joseph in the land that we might teach him the interpretation of events, i.e. dreams. And Allah is predominant over his affairs, but most of the people do not know. So a good family purchased him, right? Good family said, treat me the way that, uh, treat him nicely, make him comfortable. You know, things like this, okay? Um, and when he, Joseph, reached maturity, we gave him judgment and knowledge, and thus we reward the doers of good. So judgment and knowledge is given to people that are good. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those. I mean, and she said, uh, and she in whose house he was sought to seduce him. She closed the doors and said, come you. He said, I seek the refuge of Allah. Indeed, he is my master who has made good my residence. Indeed, wrongdoers will be, will not succeed. And she certainly determined to seduce him. And he would have inclined to her had he not seen the proof, i.e. sign of his Lord. And thus it was that we should avert from him evil and immorality. Indeed, he was of our chosen servants. Okay, so half the family was good, right? Um, you have uh, the wife uh, now all of a sudden turning into a seductress, right? And they both raced to the door and she tore his shirt from the back and they found her husband at the door. She said, what is the recompense of one who intended evil for your wife, but that he be in, uh, imprisoned or a painful punishment? So now she's lying. Um, and notice the wording that he intended to run forward uh, at her when it was uh, he was running away. Joseph said it was she who sought to seduce me and a witness from her family testified. If his shirt is torn from the front, then she was she was telling the truth. Then she has told the truth. Uh, and he is of the liars. But if the shirt is torn from the back, then she has lied and he is of the truthful. So when he, i.e. her husband, saw his shirt torn from the back, he said, indeed, it is of your, i.e. woman's plan. Indeed, your plan is great, uh, is great uh, vehement. Joseph, ignore this. And my wife asked forgiveness for your sin. Indeed, you were of the sinful. And women in the city said, the wife of Al-Aziz is seeking to seduce her slave boy. He was impassioned. Uh, he has impassioned her with love. Indeed, we see her to be in clear error. Carrying on. 
So when she heard of their scheming, she sent for them and prepared for them a banquet and gave each of them a knife and said to Joseph, come out before them. And when they saw him, they greatly admired him and cut their hands and said, perfect is Allah. This is not a man. This is none but a noble angel. So um, uh, clearly, uh, Yusuf Salam was incredibly good looking. She said, that is the one about whom you blamed me. And I certainly sought to seduce him, but he firmly refused. And if he will not do what I order him, he will surely be in prison and will be of those debased. He said, my Lord, prison is more to my liking than that to which they invite me. And if you do not avert from me their plan, I might incline toward them and thus be of the ignorant. So <clears throat> he knows his gift of beauty. He recognizes it as a trial. And, you know, subhanAllah, he's asking for jail time um, just to protect his honor. Okay. So his Lord responded to him and averted from him their plan. Indeed, he is the hearing, the knowing. Now, another cool personal reflection on this. If you know your own weakness, right, and you know your own strengths, you'll know how to beat shaitan, right? Uh, then it appeared to them after they had seen the signs that he, i.e. Al-Aziz, should surely imprison him for a time, meaning the, the owner had imprisoned him. And there entered the prison with him two young men. One of them said, indeed, I have seen myself in a dream pressing grapes for wine. The other said, indeed, I have seen myself carrying upon my head some bread from which the birds were eating. Inform us of its interpretation. Indeed, we see you to be of those who do good. He said, you will not receive food that is provided to you, except that I will inform you of its interpretation before it comes to you. <clears throat> that is from what my Lord has taught me. Indeed, I have left the religion of a people who do not believe in Allah and they, in, and they in the hereafter are disbelievers. Now, I, I don't know if it's just me, but I don't know if you guys recognize this, but Yusuf Ali Sam is giving dawah to people. <laughs> so, like, he is saying, don't be of the people that left the religion of Allah, right? Um, and sure, you know, no problem, I'll interpret this stuff for you, but recognize that this is from Allah, right? And that Allah is the true way. So... You know, subhanAllah, uh, here he is in prison and the first two people that he meets, he's immediately giving dawah, which is an invitation to join Islam. And I have followed the religion of my fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and it was not for us to associate anything with Allah. And there's the additional dawah. That is from the favor of Allah upon us and upon the people, but most of the people are not grateful, right? Uh, you know, subhanAllah. Oh, my two companions of prison are... Uh, uh, are separate lords better or or Allah, the one, the prevailing, right? right? Come to the one true deity. Why, why are you guys believing in two separate lords? Um, <clears throat> you worship not besides him except mere names. You have named them, you and your fathers, for which Allah has sent down no evidence. Meaning you don't have any evidence from, from Almighty God. Rather, come to the true path. He has commanded that you worship not accept him. That is the correct religion, but most of the people do not know. O oh, two companions of prison, as for one of you, he will give drink to his master of wine. But as for the other, he will be crucified, and the birds will eat from his head. The matter has been decreed about which you both inquire. And he said to the one whom he knew would go free, mention me before your master. But Satan made him forget the mention to his master, and he, Joseph, remained in prison several years, right? Now, obviously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite wisdom permitted this to happen, right? So he permitted him to have these types of interpretations of dreams. He permitted him to have the insight as to who to tell, and then he also permitted him to stay longer in prison. And subsequently, the king said, indeed, I have seen in a dream seven fat cows being eaten by, se by seven that were lean and seven green spikes of grain and others that were dry. Oh, eminent ones, explain to me my vision if you should interpret visions. They said, it is but a mixture of false dreams and we are not learned in the interpretation of dreams. But the one who was freed remembered after a time and said, I will inform you of its interpretation, so send me forth. Uh, now, interestingly enough, right, because of his time in prison, he was still accessible. 
and because he forgot to tell his master, now he told the, the, the Aziz, right? He said, Joseph, a man of truths, Joseph, a man of truths, explain to us about seven fat cows eating by seven uh, that were lean and seven green spikes of grain and others that were dry, that I may return to the people, i.e. the king and his courts. Perhaps they will know about you. Joseph said, you will plant for seven years consecutively and what you harvest leave in its spikes, except the little from which you will eat. Then will come after that seven difficult years, which will consume what you advanced, i.e. saved for them, except the little from which you will store. Then will come after that a year in which the people will be given rain and in which they will press olives and grapes. And the king said, bring him to me. But when the messenger came to him, Joseph said, return to your master and ask him, what is the case of the woman who cut their hands? Indeed, my Lord is knowing of their plan. Said the king to the women, what was your condition when you sought to seduce Joseph? They said, perfect is Allah. We know about him no evil. The wife of Al-Aziz says, now the truth has become evident. It was I who sought to seduce him, and indeed he is of the truthful. That is so, i.e. Al-Aziz, that is so he, which is Al-Aziz, or the king, will know that I did not betray him in his absence, and that Allah does not guide the plan of the betrayers. Alhamdulillah, guys, that is the, um, that's the 12th juz. So uh, we finished up uh, yet another segment of 30 within the Quran. Uh, I just want to conclude by saying, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan rasulullah. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa habibina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi Muhammad. Kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ala alihi wa ashabihi Ibrahim fil alamin innaka Hamidum Majid. Allahumma barik ala sayyidina wa habibina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala alihi wa ashabihi Ibrahim fil alamin innaka Hamidum Majid. Uh, at this point, if there's any non-Muslim guests, I welcome you to um, click on the link and join the stage. Uh, that way that we can have a nice discussion. In the meantime, I will um, I will be uh, checking the chat log to see how, uh, if there was any questions or anything like that that was dropped in. But if there's, uh, thank you guys so much for bearing with me. My voice is still not at 100%, so I did my best to mute myself. If I forgot at one point, I'm sorry if I blew up your ears. But um, inshallah, let's take a look and see um, what I missed, if I missed. Um, Yeah, if you, if you need a copy of the Quran, I'm assuming this is for Quran, if you need a copy of Quran, just let me know. Um, all the donations and stuff like that that come in, I uh, use that to purchase Quran so that that way that all the donors and stuff can receive Ajit, inshallah. Um, just feel free to email me. It's dawadigest at gmail.com. Okay. Uh-huh. Oh, mashallah, really active chat tonight. Thanks to all of you guys for helping me. There, are you a revert? Triskelion? A revert to Islam? Okay. Mashallah, bro. Um, let's see. I don't know about this, but if something was said in context, it couldn't catch it. Well, alhamdulillah, we treat our, our women very well. Very honorable. Yeah, 
Yeah, to my understanding, this is the difference. Um, and the Christians believe that it was a global flood in Islam. It's not explicitly stated. which means that it wasn't important. It's not like a matter of, of uh, Aqidah or anything like that, or salvation or anything. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Ah, assalamu alaikum. It's been a long time. Yeah, seriously. It'll be a really, really long time. Alaikum <laughs> salam. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Don't be scared, man. Just keep working towards it. Don't think much of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a ghafoor rahim. Cool. I think that takes it. Oh, mashallah. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome home. <laughs> welcome to the truth. And when did you take your shahada? When did you revert? Why yakum? Cool. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Yeah. What was the translation that you were reading? Is it Yusuf Ali? Yeah, um, I don't. I don't like the use of Saudi translation. He uses a lot of funky terms, and it just—they're not. He's trying to. I don't. I don't like it. It's like terms of like baptism in there and stuff. It's just kind of strange. Not really how we function. Cool, man. Well, um, Tris, if you ever, on January 14th. Oh, mashallah, bro. Mashallah. Look, if you ever are interested in sharing your story, um, I'm happy to have you on as a guest. And uh, I'm sure many people would love to, would love to hear your story. I, I, I know I would. So I have a segment called uh, Convert's Corner. And um, Mashallah, bro. Mashallah. Yeah, if you ever need anything, just give a shout out, shoot me an email. Okay, cool. Well, we uh, we polished our goal. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you guys. And uh, I type salam in Arabic. Can you read it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, I can read it. Alhamdulillah. Perfect. Yeah, just shoot me an email. And if you want to, um, if you feel comfortable sharing your story, I know people really love to hear these experiences and they, they boost all of our Iman and stuff like that. So maybe we can schedule a, a day after Ramadan, inshallah. Cool. All right. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make your guys' fast tomorrow easy. 
and uh, Baraklafik for spending time and getting another getting another juz knowledge in uh, in the name of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So uh, I wish you all the best, and uh, inshallah, I will see you guys tomorrow. Um, I might be a little bit late tomorrow because uh, I have to head on over to an iftar. Uh, however, however, alhamdulillah, and inshallah, I have all the best of intention to be here. So um, yeah, it might just be a little bit later, but inshallah, khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.